So here is my action research from the Field Museum. Let's see if I can make this, there we go, a large size. So what exactly I did was I was trying to figure out from my different things I learned at the Field Museum. Specifically, I was interested in object-based learning, and I wanted to see if it would indeed affect student learning if I implemented it in my classroom, which you can see over here in my purpose on the right. So then I had to figure out how I was going to do that. So the reason I, I, I went for this idea was I had three students who were much more disruptive than other students in my classes. So I decided that I would chart their behavior then in two days of data gathering, and then I would implement object-based learning in two days, and then finally I would do some post-data gathering objectively to see what the results were. So as I started that, there were three different students in three different classes, and unfortunately, after the first two days of data gathering, one of the boys was alternatively placed. And so I wouldn't be able to use his information with his classroom for further review. So as you can see, I had 41 minute classes that this took place in. Uh, I've identified the three students by letters. We have MD, EA, and EG. EG was removed like I had mentioned. And again, the baseline data was first two days. The following two days was implementing object-based learning. We were doing a unit on Lewis and Clark's expedition towards the West. So we were looking at artifacts that they would have used or traded with the Native Americans. And then finally, some post data gathering. So the the results were interesting. I have a graph here of of how the two students that continued in the data gathering process, EA on the left and MD on the right. And you can look here, the orange is the disruption. So in the first two days without object based learning, we have 20 disruptions and 26 disruptions. Then the first day of object-based learning, it went even higher, but it dropped. And the second day of object-based learning with a huge spike after we had finished that and went back to quote unquote, the normal classroom. And then finally in day six, a return to the norm. If we look over at MD, 17, 28, a drop on day three, uh, it increased 24 on day four with objects, and then uh, this huge spike after we had finished working with objects, and then a return to norm. The blue line here is just the non-compliance after the students have been redirected. Did they desist with the disruptive behavior? So you can see the number of those. Uh, some are more disparaging than others. For day two, for example, there's 10 redirections with 26 disruptions, so that's a good day. But then on day one, 17 non-compliances with 20 disruptions, so not a very good day as far as following directions. And lastly, it was just inappropriate language, relatively small when compared to disruptions overall. So, oops, if we go back here, Let's take a look at. Take a look here at the interventions. Hey, down here we have the redirections. Uh, there was a time where we had to be removed from class. Etc. So what was the final analysis? We have an optimistic conclusion and a pessimistic conclusion. Uh, when the object base was being done, optimistically, the overall disruptions did, complete, did decrease when compared with baseline. Uh, however, pessimistically, the day after object-based learning, a huge spike in disruptive behavior. So, so that's objectively, but subjectively, 
I think if we go beyond the numbers, there's a lot to be learned. For example, with MD, his disruptions had gone up on the first day of, of object-based learning compared to the baseline. But overall, both students, there was significant change in disruptions. But MD's disruptions on the two days that we did object-based learning tended to be prior to engaging in the actual activity. A change in classroom setting was definitely something that set him off a little more. But once we started working inside the numbers, he was very involved. He was leading the group, ended up taking a leadership role when presenting, which are things that normally the student doesn't do. And with, with EA, for him as well, he was engaged. And so when both were disrupting the class, they tended to be disruptions that were about the actual activity as opposed to random disruptions that were not relative to classroom. So the quality for MD actually increased, even though his dis overall disruptions did go up a little bit with object-based learning. However, what's also interesting for EA, he had the fourth day of the data collection process where he dropped the most. And while you look at the numbers, you say, wow, that's great. The disruptions went down to 12. But this was the most disengaged of either student during the entire process. He was pretty withdrawn, did not interact. And so ultimately, that's not something that I was looking to happen. I want all the students to be involved and try and enjoy the benefits of what we're learning. The group dynamic is what I found most interesting. When we look at the overall disruptions from the students, they were pretty much the same. You look at day one and two over here, if you add them up, and day three and four, they're pretty similar. The huge spike in day five, that's the anomaly for both of them. But overall, object-based learning didn't impact the students significantly through the entire process, except for maybe day five, you might say, well, that was some, some crazy stuff going on. But the class dynamic as a whole was much more off task, much more disruptive. And while in the past, these students would in fact be what appears to be significant reasons why the class was distracted, in this case, their behaviors did not impact the class. It was the class itself finding a difficult way to cope with this new activity, uh, and they did it unsuccessfully. So I guess the ultimate question is, was it successful? Does object-based learning impact student behavior? I believe it does, but through my data collection and analysis, I don't know if we can determine if it successfully uh, impacts distracted students or not. So that's something for you to decide.